والمرسلين خاتم النبيين ابي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى اللهم صل على
also dream of the paradise. It is as if we have visited the paradise and the Jannah and we come back when we wake up in the morning. There's no skill in that. A skill is when your physical body ascends to the places. To this day, the world is unable to figure out how to travel to those places where Rasulullah had traveled. Allah starts his speech with Subhanallah, Subhanallah, which denotes the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from all the deficiency. There's no deficiency in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't doubt that he took his servant in the physical estate and not merely in the spiritual estate. Although as I mentioned, it is mentioning from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa, it does not contradict the fact that Rasulullah traveled beyond Masjid al-Aqsa. Why? The ayat it says, لِنُرِيَهُ min ayatina, So that we may show and display to him our signs uh, which are not in Masjid al-Aqsa. Rather, these signs were up in the ascension to the heavens where Rasulullah had um, gone to. And this is further explained in the ayat of Surah Al-Najm. Another important aspect of this verse is that the history behind it. There are two dates that are mentioned. That Rasulullah went to Mi'raj. When did he go to Mi'raj? First date, which is mentioned by the early historians, such as Ibn Is'ar, and as well as uh, uh, Ibn Hisham, they say that the tenth year after the Baithat of Rasulullah. So Rasulullah is already Mabrooth bi Risala, meaning he's 50 years old. That is the first time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invited his Habib in person to come and do this mulaqat. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not do mulaqat because Allah is a child. Just asked me a question before the program began. He said, Mawlana, I have a question. I said, what is your question? He said, Mawlana, why can't we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The minds of the youngsters, you know, they ask these questions. Why can't we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, of course, this is a detailed answer that has to be given. It cannot be in one sentence, but you got to come to the level of a child to be able to make them understand how and why we can't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? It is not that Allah cannot be seen, but it is that our inability to be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why I say this? We can see Allah, not with the physical eyes of ours, rather through the iman and the yaqeen that we have. Another way of seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through the signs in the universe that are all around that make us believe that there is a creator who brought everything into existence. So yes, in a nutshell, you cannot see him as the eye of the Quran is reflective of that because Allah is not a physical being which you can lay your eyes onto. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be seen by us. Amir Mu'mineen mentions that in the very first khutbah of Nahjul Malaha that if you claim that you can see Allah, it is as if you have associated physical aspect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That which is associated with physical aspect can be divided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indivisible. That's why we don't say Qul huwallahu wahid. Why wahid can be divided? We say Qul huwallahu ahad. Ahad cannot be divided. So therefore we look at that sometimes to rationalize between these different views. It has been said that Rasulullah went to Mi'raj after the 10th year or after the 12th year after Hijrah. This is to do with the fact around the time the wafat of Hadrat Abu Talib, Rasulullah had gone to Mi'raj. This is when he had to go to Mi'raj. Why? Because he had lost his biggest supporter, the moral supporter. And after that, going to Mi'raj is something which is giving this boost to Rasulullah, that yes, you may have lost your biggest moral support on the ground, but we are still here to go ahead and provide full support to you. So there were more than one ascension for the Prophet, not just once, uh, the one who's Habib Ilahi, the one who's considered to be Habibullah. Why would there be only one mulaqat? There were multiple mulaqat of such that had taken place. So this is one way of mentioning that there was more than once Rasulullah had ascended to Mi'raj. From the time Prophet told the Quraysh that I saw the angel of revelation when he received the first revelation in his original and pure state, all the Quraysh stood up and started to mock him. 
Quran in response to say that afatumarunahu ala ma yura do you mock him about what he has seen wa laqad ra'ahu nazlatan ukhra he certainly saw jibrail during his other ascent to sidratul muntaha innaha jannatul ma'wa this is the ayah Right here, this is Surah Najm, ayah number 14 and 15. It says, What? Uh, that he ascent to the lot tree in the seven heavens, near which is paralyzed, when the tree was covered with a covering, Prophet's eyes did not deceive him. We see how quickly people associate. Uh, even at that time, the Kufar and Mushrikeen of Mecca, when Rasulullah sent and told the story, why is he telling it to these Mushrikeen? Majority of them are related to Rasulullah. So we had to explain this. They started mocking him. And similarly today, those who do not accept Rasulullah's physical ascension to Miraj, they are no worse than those people who are mocking Rasulullah at that time. To deny that Rasulullah ascended is not only to uh, have any doubt in his Rasalat, but also to doubt the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Location of ascent among the writers, history, um, you know, and the elucidators of Quran, they mention that this ascension took place from Masjid al Haram. So if you go to Masjid al Haram, and if I can paint a picture for you, then when you um, walk in from the clock tower, so everybody now knows where the clock tower is. So when you walk in from the clock tower, right in front of you is Bab, of course, there, Malik Abdul Aziz. It's the Bab of Malik Abdul Aziz. Don't go in from there. When you go to the right side of it, you are basically walking towards Safa, Mount Safa. Don't enter into the Safa. That place which is near Mount Safa from the outside of the masjid, from the outside of the main boundary of the masjid, that is the place where sister of Amir Mu'mineen, Umm Ayman, used to live. That is the maqam from which Rasulullah had ascended to Mi'raj. Mm -hmm. This is mentioned in the books of history that that's where Rasulullah had ascended from. The apparent reading of the verse, it began from Masjid al Haram. The whole area is considered to be Masjid al Haram. You know, Amir Mu'mineen mentions this and a little Imam. Imam Hassan al-Asqari al that if you want to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how Rasulullah is reaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it cannot be done except at night time. So this miraj also took place at night time. You want to attain this miraj, you can also do so to at the night time. So what was the method? How did Rasulullah go? Some people say miraj is the prophet took place during his sleep. While others said the no, Mi'raj was simply spiritual. However, since the noble prophet had mentioned during the Mi'raj, I met with the various prophets, I saw different angels, I saw heaven and hell, and I was brought to the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala up to Sidratul Muntaha. These details denote the fact that it was a physical journey of Rasulullah. And then Rasulullah sees a few things. He saw a stone in hell. He saw people who used to eat forbidden food here. He saw the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treated those who used to do ghibat and backbite. He saw those who used to take the wealth of the orphans and used to take interest. He saw all of these people. He met with different prophets as well to name Hazrat Yahya, Hazrat Isa, Hazrat Yusuf, Hazrat Idris, Hazrat Harun, and Hazrat Ibrahim. Philosophy of Mara, why Allah subhanahu wa called him just for a visit? What is it? That when someone superior calls you, of course there has to be something which is superior, that is important that is being announced. Otherwise, it's not just merely a vacation. You come by, you'll have a good time, you'll enjoy, it's spending a couple of days over here, and then you'll go back. Well, that was not the purpose. There must have been a real purpose behind it. Surah Najm, ayat number 18 says, لَقَدْ رَعَى مِنْ آيَاتِ رَبِّهِ الْقُبْرَى And he certainly saw some of the greatest signs of his Lord to see the sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah had ascended to Miraj. Surah Naba begins by saying, Amma yatasa'anun anin Naba'il Azim. Naba'il Azim is referred to Amirul Mu'mineen. 
No wonder when Rasulullah ascended to Mi'raj, the voice that he heard was malus to him, none other than the voice of Amir Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib ibn Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa 